And Andy Roddick will serve to Marty Fish. And the two of them, I keep saying they're childhood friends, but they basically lived together. Go ahead, as Fish moved to Florida from Edina, Minnesota. Nice volley. They know each other's moves. Roddick led 9-3 on the ATP Tour. Marty Fish, though, won the last two meetings, so it was 9-1 at one point. And you were I'll say it's an ace. Twelve and two. Starting fast. My goodness. All courtesy of that serve. Three nothing. Andy Roddick is. The Philadelphia Freedom's marquee player, Marty Fish, is the Empire's marquee player. Down the team, didn't touch it. And that's game number one to Andy Roddick. All-time ace leaders on the ATP World Tour since 1991. Ivo Karlovich with 12,000 plus. Goran Ivanisevic with 10,000 plus. Roger Federer at 10,000 plus. John Isner. 9,200 plus, and there's Andy Roddick, 9,000 plus. Now Roddick's retired. Isner's still playing, so is Fed. Uh, even Isovic and, and uh, Karlovic are retired. Check that. Karlovic's still playing. He wants to retire. <laughs> Ten seven total score. Empire has taken each of the first two sets, men's doubles, women's doubles, now it's men's singles. And Marty Fish trying to even this up here. Oh. Try to go down the tee on that. Note on Marty Fish, quarterfinalist in three of the four majors, all but French. He's a hard court guy at heart and in practice. There's one back for you, Andy. Nice serve by Marty Fish. And it's 2-1. Another one, I think that ticked the net, but so you might not call it an ace, but there was no return. won the game big serve and Marty Andy Roddick wants to know what's going on he's coming to the Andy Roddick said I thought you were joking at first on the call but game. apparently not but that is game Roddick thought it was out Fish knew it was in. Fish ran right off the court. Fish got the game. And you look at the Empire's rank. Ben's singles. Roddick's still going. 
They're first in men's singles. Freedoms are sixth. That, that's in large part because Marty Fish has been playing for the Empire, and Andy Roddick has not been playing for the Freedoms. Don't make Andy mad. You know, of his rivalry with Roger Federer, Andy Roddick once said, you know, it's only a rivalry when both sides win, and Roddick was getting thrashed on the regular by Federer, and you could say the same here with Fish, who was down 9-1 before he won the last two matches of their rivalry of the matchup. So it's 9-3 career in favor of Roddick. Not much of a rivalry, but a lot of love between these two players. When he was playing on tour, just so you know, Craig Barton has, has something to say to us. Talking to Susan Burns, the chair umpire. That's serve and volley tennis by Andy Roddick. Their marquee player plays like a marquee player. Backhand by Fish and a little backhand volley in the open court. 3-0. And that's two. So. Your greatest of several game points. Let's get out. Three and one. Roddick a little displeased with himself. Fish trying to hang on here. <laughs> now that looked like a backhand volley from a guy who hasn't played in a while. Figured, he, and we saw that with the with Sloan Stevens and Taylor Townsend as well. Except they have been playing. Takes the third game and he leads two to one in this third set. Let's go down to Harry Chickma. Harry. Well, Michael, you keep mentioning they grew up together. Uh, Andy Roddick and Marty Fish. That's very accurate. Of course, Roddick becoming number one in the world. Uh, Marty Fish, once number seven in the world, an Olympic silver medalist. Now, don't forget, Marty has a straight set win over Roger Federer at Indian Wells, so he often picks on Andy about that because uh, that was an impressive win. But one important note to keep in mind about Marty is he's playing very, very well this summer. He already has a win over Francis Tiafo in Milan World Team Tennis. Tiafo currently on the ATP Tour doing damage, and he played very, very competitive tennis against Donald Young uh, the last time. Uh, New York took on Philadelphia. So Marty's, uh, as I mentioned before, playing at an ATP World Tour level. So while Andy may dominate the head-to-head, -head, this would be a big win for Roddick. It sure would, Harry. Marty Fish, 35 years of age, 6-2, seventh World Team Tennis season. He is playing at a high level. Backspin drop shot on that. You better have a lot more backspin on it than what Marty Fish offered for Andy Roddick. Roddick saw it. He came up. He's always been mobile anyway. Puts the passing shot right by. You look at Taylor Townsend. That's my guy. That is my guy. So Marty Fish on his serve trying to get on the board. Not a lot of coaching if you're coaching Andy Roddick for Craig Carter. That was an ace. Marty Fish with six singles 
and eight doubles titles during his career in the ATP World Tour. By the way, he's a golfer too. Just uh, did very well out in Lake Tahoe, celebrity golfer. Another ace by Marty Fish. He almost won that celebrity tournament at Edgewood Country Club in South Lake Tahoe. So he's a two-sport athlete among the world best in two different sports. Two all here in the third set, Fish serving to Roddick in men's singles. Roddick wants that one back. Andy Roddick won the 2003 U.S. Open, same year he reached number one. He was 21 years old at that time. And then in 2005, they had a whole American Express campaign. Where's Andy's mojo? Another ace by Marty Fish. Whole American Express campaign. Where did Andy, Andy's mojo go? And, uh, <laughs> it went as uh, we'll be back in a second from Philadelphia. Hang on. I don't have a lot of. One, two, three, four. Testing. One, two, three, four. Campus of St. Joseph's University, men's singles, Andy Roddick serving to Marty Fish. It's two all in the third set. And joining us up in the booth, the CEO and commissioner of Milan World Team Tennis, Ilana Kloss. Great to see you. How are you? Good. A lot of miles uh, these past few days. And uh, great, great uh, to be here uh, in Philadelphia. Always great to see you, Ilana. And, and when you look at this this venue, what do you think of, of the new digs for the Philadelphia Freedom? I think it's fantastic. It's a real tight building. The sound's great, built for college basketball. So I think uh, really good energy, and it's exciting to see uh, Andy Roddick try to bring the Freedoms back. Yeah, and uh, when you look at how the, the Freedoms have performed in men's singles, they're, they're not as highly ranked as some of the other teams, and Andy Roddick hasn't been playing for them. Now maybe that changes, right? Well, you know, the great thing about team tennis is that every set is valued the same, but it's all about momentum. And uh, the Freedoms got off to a slow start, but uh, Andy and Marty know each other's game. So in this set, it's really about who's going to execute better. Um, they've played each other many, many times. And uh, Andy's still uh, pretty competitive. This format actually suits him because he's got a big serve, the no ad scoring really favors, I think, the big hitters. One thing I found interesting as Roddick serves as one, at one all is that most sports leagues are, are craving for parity. They want everybody to be the same. They want everybody to be alive for the playoffs. And you've got four teams tied for first place. It's unbelievable. We're halfway through the season. And like you said, four teams. Tonight's a huge match because if Philadelphia wins, you know, they stay in the hunt with three or four other teams, but if New York wins, then they tie also to be in the lead. So 
I think um, as a commissioner of a league like this, I always want the home teams to win at home. <laughs> it's nice. It's know. nice. Everyone's <laughs> happy that way. Doesn't always happen, yeah. We were pointing out that the first two matches of the season, New York and Philadelphia, New York took them both, the second one here in Philadelphia, and the Freedoms are now in the midst of six straight matches at home, so maybe a little home cooking can help them assert themselves as Roddick and Fish continue to go at it. Now, all right. So, so uh, tell us about what's new this season, beginning with with Mark Ein and Fred Luddy are the new majority owners. Billy Jean King is is certainly still there, sold her majority ownership to them. That was heralded going into the season. What what difference do you uh, think that that will make going forward, if any? Well, I think it's fantastic actually to bring in uh, some younger, fresh energy. I mean, Billy Jean still outruns all of us on the energy position, but. Mark and Fred, um, I think, are new at World Team Tennis. They're very, very committed. And I think it's time for World Team Tennis 2.0. And I think, you know, with Billy and my experience having been around over 42 years, I think it's terrific that we've kind of handed the baton over and to two owners who have experience, so they know what it takes. But um, back down on the court, this is a, a huge game, as you know, Michael. Every point in World Team Tennis counts, and a, a three-all point right here. And I guess you if you want anyone to serve, it would be Andy. <laughs> <laughs> He serves it, he serves an ace, and serves a winner. So that is 3 2 in favor of the Freedoms. Cuban moves scoring. So they trail now 12 9 to the visiting New York Empire. Men's singles in this third set, so to speak, third event. Men's doubles, women's doubles, men's singles, women's singles, and mixed doubles still to come. And you know what's, what's interesting to me is the, the foundation of the sport that was laid by Billie Jean and Larry King and some others way back in 1974, it still works, you know? Well, How could they have been so visionary? Well, I think Americans love team sports, that's important, and I think tennis has great men and women who both play the sport, and I think when you have men and women together, it makes it a much more exciting event. Tennis has the ability to do that. When you add team and you add playing for something bigger than yourself, your city, your community, it's an experience tennis players don't have very often. And they love it. Um, you know, they want to be cheered locally. They want to feel like they belong. And so I think uh, the format, even though it's been around 42 years, I think it's a huge opportunity and a huge on-ramp for the sport of tennis here in America to get some Americans back in number one. Yeah. We need number ones. And I think uh, I World Team Tennis and franchises all over the country can, can help do that. Do you have... Do you have in mind a, a next stop, so to speak, a next franchise? Can you, can you break any news for us here, Ilana? <laughs> well, again, I mean, I, we definitely want to expand, and the goal is to have at least two teams, probably four teams for next year. So we're looking at a variety of markets. Um, you know, I think it's important that we add cities because I think all a lot of us grew up as ball kids, and you have to see it to be it. And I think the more professional tennis we can have in the country, the better it is for kids as an honor for our sport. Two, nothing. Uh, Marty Fish in this one, in this sixth game. And he's serving to get back in, tie this up at three apiece if he can. And this has been a, a great set, it really has, between Two friends, I, I don't know if you call them rivals. We, we talked about it earlier. Andy certainly has had it all over Marty in their, in their ATP career. Yeah, but but uh, this is a great competition, isn't it? Absolutely. And Marty Fish still hits the ball so well. He's got amazing hands. Uh, really, really talented, can do a lot. And very um, nimble, hits the ball cleanly. Watch it. That is too tough to handle for Andy Roddick. So now. It is 3-1. The 
and Marty Fish keep, you know, get back in this thing, and who knows? Maybe we'll talk, we'd be talking about an Empire third set win, or maybe even a, a tie break. We don't know. Well, I think in World Team Tennis, it's really critical to try and keep the cumulative score close. So this set for the Philadelphia Freedoms is a lot more important than it is for the New York Empire because they're trying to make up a four-game deficit at the start of the set. So. Mm -hmm. The extended play is amazing. As, as we saw last night here, yeah. where it looked like uh, the, the Castles were going to run roughshod over, over yeah. the Freedoms, and they won that last set, forced an extended play. That is another brilliant ad. Uh, absolutely, I think uh, Billie Jean and Larry King were ahead of the curve. I think the sport's starting to catch up. The one other interesting thing is that we have been miking some of the players in competition, and it's incredible what you learn from them while they're competing. And so World Team Tennis has really always tried to be the innovator and the think tank of the sport, and we're going to continue to try to push innovation because I think we need it if we're going to get new fans and keep young fans in the sport. You're right, I think that's the key. There it is. And Great yeah. point here. This, uh, right now, this is the biggest point of the match because if Andy Roddick somehow can break and hold, you know, the match is uh, not going to be much. But uh, Coach Craig Carden is taking a Geico timeout, and that's another World Team Tennis innovation. Geico timeout, let's listen. Yeah, right. I got it. All right, here we go. You think the players like getting coached? They're so used to doing it themselves. You know what? I, I think coaching's great. It gives tennis more stories and more column inches. And at the end of the day, the player still has to execute. You can tell them whatever you want, but if they can't execute, it doesn't matter. So I think coaching is fantastic for our sport. Marty Fisher, even this up. That's a good start with an ace right there. What do you hear from the players about Milan World Team Tennis? What are they doing? Like? What keeps them coming back? I think the one thing that's great about World Team Tennis, because you have no ad scoring and every game counts, every point counts, and you're playing for the team, your concentration has to be unbelievable. You have to be really focused. And I think also you have to be a quick starter. With no ad scoring, you don't have time to kind of warm up with a five-game set. You have to get out of the blocks fast. So I think... This is great preparation for the U.S. Open Series that follows that season. Into the net by Marty Fish. Ilana, thanks so much for joining us. Ilana Kloss, the commissioner, the CEO of Milan World Team Tennis. You're doing a great job. I love the venue, as I've loved the, all the other venues. This is just the latest great stop for the Philadelphia Freedoms. Thank you so much, Ilana Kloss, joining us. You know what? It is my pleasure. It's my honor and my pleasure. You know that. All right, here's. singles. Marty Fish will serve now to even this up. Otherwise, if Roddick prevails, the Freedom will get their first set win. You heard Ilana Kloss, the commissioner, just say it's so important for teams, for the, the team that's trailing to at least keep it close if they want to get back in there. Although, with extended play, the team that's trailing, if they win that last set, they get a chance to stay in it, try to even it up, and force a super tie break.
That's the tennis we're here for. That rally right there. Greg Carton likes it. The Freedoms like it. The fans here at Hagen Arena love it. As Andy Roddick takes that first point off of Marty Fish in this eighth game. And if Fish can hold serve, which will be saying something, but if he can, then we will go to our first tiebreak of the night. Yeah, he's tired. You know you're tired, Marty. It's a toughie. Oh, the ball hit the scoreboard. So therefore, scoreboard's out of play. So it's one off. You can't hit this just like the home run hitting contest in Miami a week or two ago. The roof that nobody could ever hit that Aaron Judge hit. But it's a lot easier to hit the scoreboard here at Hank Hagen Arena with a tennis ball, especially if you're Andy Roddick and Marty Fish. Just missed it, Andy. Remember the score, scoreboard of Walter Brown Arena up in Boston, the Boston Lobsters, the campus of Boston University. That was a low scoreboard. You could barely serve. Marty Fish with a 2-1 lead over Andy Roddick. See, once they get the juices going. So that's a double fall. Two two. Gigi Fernandez contemplating it. But once they get the juices going, this could be Wimbledon, this could be. The Australian, in terms of their focus and their will, their will to win, their desire to win. Okay, maybe a little more smiles here. A nice approach by Marty Fish. Sir, follows it up. Marty Fish ranked as high as seventh in singles, 14th in doubles, won the silver medal in Athens at the Olympics in 2004, reached the quarterfinals of the Australian Wimbledon U.S. Open hardcourt guy. Down the tee for Marty. So that's that. It's four apiece. So now we go to a tiebreak. It's a nine-point tiebreak. Now we apparently there is a Geico timeout. Let's hear what Craig Carton and Andy Roddick are talking about this Geico timeout. All right, here we go. First two. Aaron, change it to change it four. Don't worry about it. Here we go. Andy Roddick cursing himself and Craig Carton saying, don't worry about it. It's over. Let's go. Change sides at four. First player to win five points wins the set. A little banana from Marty. Pat on the back from Gigi. Uh, this is getting heated up here. You know if Joel Embiid is still in the house and Sloan Stevens is not in the court, then things are looking good. 14-10 Empire lead. And they need this win. A win by the Empire would even them up at 4-4 four and, four and would drop the Freedoms to 4-4. Four 
as the season's second match begins. And for that matter, if the Springfield Lasers manage to upset the Washington Castles tonight at Washington, unlikely but possible, there'd be three teams tied for first at four and four. Shot by Marty Fish just inside the sideline. As usual, I misspoke. So, San Diego and Ocean County, Orange County are playing tonight. Both of those teams are currently in first place, so the, the winner will remain in first place. It'll be a three way tie then for second place. Switch sides, and Andy Roddick will certainly stay in the set. And if you're surprised, I'm stunned because you would, you would think that that armed with that nine and three record on tour against his friend Marty Fish, that Andy Roddick might be able to do this. But we mentioned that Marty did win their last two matches between them. So would this be nine and four? Roddick serves. Still set point. At this point, you're going to have to win the rest of them. Hit by Fish. Roddick gets another, so it's now 2 4. Andy Roddick, top 10 tour finishes nine straight years. Top 10 nine straight years. That's Hall of Fame worthy. Then you throw in the U.S. Open Championship. Let's go. Just get Fish and the New York Empire. 